Hello guys, uh, welcome to uh, Exercise Physiology then. Um, so this is your third energy system out of three. Uh, we're looking at the aerobic energy system. And as I said to you in your last lesson, for all of you, which was on the lactic acid system, uh, it was important that you understood the lactic acid system because the lactic acid, lactic acid system is the process of anaerobic glycolysis. So the, the breakdown of glycogen. Um, without oxygen present. Now what we have a look at now is the third system, the aerobic system, and that basically starts in exactly the same way, by glycolysis. Now glycolysis in this case does have the presence of oxygen. So this aerobic system obviously would tell you that it is that it does have oxygen. Therefore, when we get down to pyruvic acid, instead of being converted into lactic acid, it is actually going to carry on into two further stages. So just as a quick intro, you're going to have three stages of the aerobic system. Stage one um, is virtually the lactic acid system, but with no lactic acid produced. Okay, then you go into stage two which is a Krebs cycle, then you go down to stage three, which is the electron transfer chain. So basically what we need to look at then is kind of um, how these bits. So what I'm expecting from you at the end of the screencast is one, a flow chart of the kind of reactions. Two, I'm expecting a definite set of questions that would incorporate the following key things. The site of reaction for each stage, you might want to make a note of these, the site of reaction for each stage. Um, the breakdowns or the combinations, which I'll explain as we go through. And then we're looking at um, how many ATP are produced at each stage. And then at the end, you accumulate the number of ATP produced at each stage into one whole um, number for ATP produced during this energy system. Now, if we start off, you've kind of got um, the same process. Now, what I need you to do is to make sure you start with glycogen because glycogen isn't on this PowerPoint and it should be. So if you could just start off then, so if I could just get you to put glycogen first. Okay, so your glycogen would be here. It's broken down by GPP into glucose. So that's your first stage. Now, what happens there? Glucose is then broken down by PFK, phosphofructokinase, into uh, sorry, and, and releasing or resynthesizing to ATP. So that's your first bit. Now, that obviously is similar to what we've done before. The big change comes here. Now, what I've done is I've put this on here so you can see how it differs. You do not write down this bit, this bit, and this bit. Okay, they do not come into it because glucose, when it's broken down by PFK, is converted into pyruvic acid. Now, because oxygen is present, this does not take place. So ALDH is not stimulated and lactic acid is not produced because we have oxygen present and there is no sign of obla. Okay, so obla is not going to come and all the things we talked about last lesson. So what happens instead then, and this is a kind of important bit, that is stage one. Okay, stage one is called aerobic glycolysis. Okay, and so if you want to make a note of that, aerobic glycolysis takes place in the muscle sarcoplasm. Okay, and this is what happens. You just cancel out this and this now because pyruvic acid now has the presence of oxygen it allows it uh, allows um glycolysis to actually fully take place and it does it by aerobic metabolism so the metabolism of aerobic fuel so basically what we're going to do now is have a look at what happens from here so stage one aerobic glycolysis then what you need to do is have a look at the concept so because oxygen is present what happens is instead of enzymes splitting or breaking down a fuel what it does now is it that these enzymes combine Okay, so basically what you have is pyruvic acid, okay, from this point, will combine with coenzyme A. So pyruvic acid plus coenzyme A equals acetyl-CoA. So you've basically got now this point here. So it's important you get this combination, pyruvic acid. So instead of it being broken down now, it combines. So the plus equals combines with coenzyme A to form acetyl-CoA. And then... What you've got from there, so if you're, that's just an abbreviation for coenzyme A there. Okay, so then what happens is another combination. Okay, so the next combination is that there is going to be acetyl-CoA is going to combine with oxalacetic acid. Okay, and that is going to lead to citric acid. Now, citric acid is key because citric acid is, is the key component that enters stage two, which is called the Krebs cycle. Okay, so you might want to make a note of stage two equals a Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle takes place in the mitochondria matrix. Okay, um, as you can see up here, you can kind of see a picture of the mitochondria, and you can see exactly where it takes place there. So basically, what happens from there is 
citric acid will enter the Krebs cycle and via quite a few complex reactions which fortunately for you you don't have to really go into what happens is the kind of product and what is released from the Krebs cycle are the following four things firstly you get 2 ATP the second thing is you um, produce carbon dioxide which is a non-harmful byproduct that you can breathe out then you're going down to um, the regeneration of oxalacetic acid okay which isn't on there but that's something you can put in the regeneration of oxalacetic acid and also there is a hydrogen atom which is released so the most i mean obviously there's, they're all important but ultimately if you look at the two key important ones here you need to know them all but 2 atp being produced is obviously vital because that allows the resynthesis of atp but also this hydrogen now the key reason why hydrogen is important is because hydrogen is the thing or the kind of uh, the kind of uh, product that actually continues in um, the aerobic system so basically the hydrogen atom is released okay and this then joins the coenzymes NAD and FAD and then so what happens is because you've got H as your symbol for hydrogen okay and NAD and FAD are the two coenzymes that carry they're basically electron carriers so basically what happens here is you'll have NAD H and FAD H because you stick the H on the end of NAD and FAD and then it will enter uh, so as you see there you've got that concept through there then this will go into the electron transfer chain okay so at the electron transfer chain it's very important you kind of get this to bit so basically what you have is um, an atom fad which are obviously carrying, carrying the hydrogen atoms the hydrogen atom is then going to split Okay, so this split causes a, a massive surge of energy or, or re, a massive resynthesis of ATP. So what's going to happen is the hydrogen will split. The electron from within the hydrogen atom is going to, um, that splitting is going to cause the resynthesis of 34 ATP. Okay, and the hydrogen ion is going to combine with oxygen to form H2O so you'll all be kind of um, familiar with that concept so that is kind of um, it combines with O2 to form H2O and we can kind of sweat that out um, etc so basically the site at which this takes place at is the mitochondria Christi okay so you can see the Christi here and the little folds that's where that takes place and that stage there obviously is electron transfer chain you've got a Krebs cycle and you've got aerobic glycolysis up here so basically they are the combinations you need you I mean that the thing that's going to make you successful in this is uh, the quality of your Cornell questions because if you if your Cornell questions are poor it's going to make it really difficult especially when you get down to um, the combinations once her pyruvic acid is allowed to aerobically metabolize and go into the aerobic system that you understand that we have to start using enzymes as a combination tool rather than a breakdown tool so you've got to make sure you understand these combinations here uh, that is vitally important because you get those two right and you are writing a very high order answer okay we've got citric acid going into Krebs cycle what's the site what's released four things and then the key thing is hydrogen because hydrogen is then going to carry on as an atom and then we looked at how it's carried and then when it splits so you can see here the final thing you're going to be looking at, the summary questions, is it's not 34 ATP produced in the aerobic system, it's 34 ATP plus 2 ATP plus 2 ATP, which equals 38 ATP. Now, obviously, this will be used in long distance kind of events and anything that goes on after three minutes because the oxidation process is going to take three minutes to materialize due to the complexity of the reactions that, has, that have to happen in order for um, oxygen to actually get into our muscle cell okay so there you keep it if you can make good cornell notes on those please and it is vitally important that you take time to do the questions on these do this poorly and the lesson will be poor and you will go into a2 not feeling in a good place do this right and take a bit of pride over it you've got a massive chance of starting the year being able to answer the toughest probably the toughest area in the course as i've kind of tried to repeat over and over again in the last couple of weeks okay thank you